Welcome to Nonprofit Profiles. I'm Genevieve Riatort. One of the things I love about Santa Monica is the wealth of community-based opportunities to learn, share, and connect. A shining example of that kind of community engagement is the Virginia Avenue Park. On today's show, we'll find out about how it is so much more than just a park. It's a campus that's home to a multitude of fantastic programs for Santa Monica residents and visitors of all ages. We'll get started with Carla Fantosi, Principal Supervisor at Virginia Avenue Park. Thanks for being with us, Carla. Thank you, Genevieve. And I hope I pronounced your name right. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> so we don't often hear about a park being a campus. Can you tell me exactly what that means? Well, you know, the park has really just grown over the years. Uh, when the park reopened in 2005, mm -hmm. it not only had a center where they did after school programs, but it also had basketball courts, playgrounds, a splash pad, which is considered one of the most popular features and water features in Santa Monica. So is that where the kids stand up and the water splashes up at them on yes. hot days? Yes, and they have like water pistols. And from the beginning of May until the end of September, it is totally packed up there. Wow. We also have uh, different facilities that are available for rent mm -hmm. at, for birthday parties on the weekends, so the patio room and also in the Thelma Terry building. Uh, we also have a PAL gym there. So, you know, the programs are just overwhelming how many different buildings that we have with different programs in them. So the PAL gym is in the Park Center building and we have a teen center that offers a great variety of programs for middle, high school, and some college students as well. And then the latest addition, which I really think is the reason we're a campus now, mm -hmm. is because we have the new Pico Branch Library with us in the park and it just adds to all of the resources that are available to the community. Wow, it almost sounds like you're, you know, like a college. <laughs> <laughs> it is in a way, because, you but know. But for all ages. Yes, for all ages. Uh, really, from morning until night, you have children, adults, seniors at the park doing different things. Mm -hmm. Like if you came by uh, in the morning, mm -hmm. you would see children playing in the splash pad, uh, parents and going to mommy and me classes, and even having story times at the library. And then in the afternoons, you have different homework assistance programs happening. So you have elementary students getting their homework done and also working with artists and creating things. Uh, and, they ha and then you also have them doing karate in the PAL gym. And then in the evening, you won't mm -hmm. believe it, in the evening the park is still busy because we have community meetings there. So from 7 until 10, they'll, you'll see lots of things happening. And are those programs a mixture of free programs and programs that there's a, a, a cost to? How does that work? You know, actually all of our programs at Virginia Avenue Park are free. Oh, well, that's and great. Yes, all of them are free. The park is really there for that local community mm -hmm. and we really try and provide and co-locate as many services as possible for that local community, which, uh, you know, you don't want people to have to go too far away to get different services and that's where our nonprofits come in because not only do we offer programs that the city uh, provides and sponsors but we have different nonprofits that come and provide services for free in the neighborhood right there in the neighborhood so tell me about some of the nonprofits and the programs that they provide I know there's a, a long list <laughs> <laughs> yeah there is and we're really excited because the park, when it reopened in 2005, wanted to be this kind of a hub, and mm -hmm. I think we actually are quite successful at that right it now. It sounds like it. It sounds like you have a little bit of everything and, and kind of something for everyone there. Yeah, so for early childhood, the Connections for Children and Venice Family Clinic and the Westside Family Health Center offer mommy and me classes and nutritional programs for families, for young families. Uh, we also have Emeritus College, which you'll be hearing from later. Yes, I'm offering, excited about that. <laughs> offering fitness programs and literature and programs in Spanish as well. Uh, and then we also have mental health services available. So we have a little counseling center mm -hmm. and our different uh, mental health service providers in the community can, can meet clients there and they have a room that they can use. So are they able to also do some outreach? Because I know sometimes the park can be a draw for people who don't have anywhere else to go. Um, yes, well they do a lot of outreach in the park. And you know, I was talking about the community meetings that we have in the evening. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a very popular place to do those kinds of meetings because you reach the community that I is impacted mm -hmm. directly. And so our 
our community members and our families that live in the neighborhood will participate and come to a lot of the meetings. And are those meeting rooms available for use by um, groups or clubs or uh, you know other types of organizations that might need a space to have a meeting? Uh, actually, during the week, the, mm -hmm. the rooms are all in use for programs. You're just that busy. <laughs> yeah, we're that busy, <laughs> it's the truth. But on the weekends, uh, private citizens can borrow, rent the rooms mm -hmm. for birthday parties or different kinds of events, personal events. And, and then do they have to be residents of Santa Monica? No. It no. can just be anyone who, who yeah. There's wants a different that space. rate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it costs a little <laughs> different, a little less if you're uh, a resident. Mm -hmm. But and then nonprofits can also rent the rooms, mm -hmm. and they get a nonprofit rate to offer a program now and again. That's so wonderful. I mean, it really sounds like the city and the park in particular is getting behind the community and finding ways to provide really a unique. Uh, host of services because you don't hear about this in other cities that, that often. Well, you know, I don't think so. And, and it is really a wonderful, you know, we often say Santa Monica is resource rich and mm -hmm. I think Virginia Avenue Park is an example of that. They really, pr we try to provide all of these different services. Mm -hmm. You know, our parents that come and participate at the park, they bring their children there, they're very much engaged and they want the best for their children. And so we try and bring together at the park all those services that can help parents mm -hmm. provide and ensure that their children will be successful in life and in school and finding jobs and all That's that. That's so valuable because I know I'm a parent, you know, mm -hmm. I, my, my kids are teenagers now, but I remember when they were little and we would go to the park and, you know, some parks had more resources than others, but it sounds like at Virginia Avenue Park, people can really find out about a whole host of programs that otherwise they might not have known existed. Yeah, it's, it's very true. Uh, the you know parents will come in and even ask for to be more involved. Uh, we have a number of our Spanish-speaking parents who are always there. And you know, a, a couple years ago, we were like, they really want to do more things. So we uh, provided them with a parent leadership mm -hmm. uh, training, and now they start planning events at the park, and That's they so even great. invite the the um, police chief to come and speak with them. So it's it's really a lot of fun. That sounds amazing. It sounds like you're really empowering people to not just take advantage of what already exists, but to create their own programs. Yes, it is. So I know we're running a little short on time, but I just want to mention some of the other fantastic nonprofits because yes. uh, our viewers are obviously very interested in nonprofits, and a lot of these are going to be very familiar. You work with, as you said, Connections for Children and Westside Family Center, uh, Westside yeah. Family Health Center. Venice Family Clinic, St. Joseph Center, mm -hmm. Jewish Vocational Services, Chrysalis, uh, the Emeritus College, and Wise and Healthy Aging. I mean, these are some, some really fantastic uh, local yeah. nonprofits, and it sounds like you're working with everyone. Yeah, we really try and bring all of the different resources right there to the community in their neighborhood. Like Wednesday afternoons is sort of employment Wednesdays because JVS is there and Chrysalis is there. Uh, so that is really wonderful. That's really and quite I good. see also the arts and recreation is important, the Santa Monica Youth Orchestra and Cabeza de Vaca Cultural School. Yes, they offer, we have Folklorico on fr Friday nights and then the Santa Monica Youth Orchestra is there on Sundays and they utilize the space but also bring wonderful music and opportunities to our children. So how can our viewers participate? Well, you know, just come on over to Virginia Avenue Park and meet and talk with us in our front office. We can tell you about all the different programs. Uh, or you can also come to visit our website and, mm -hmm. and check out what's going on. And if you want to get involved as a volunteer, we have lots of opportunities for that too. Always can use more volunteers. Well, wonderful. I want to thank you so much for being with us. I'm so amazed. I can't believe one park can offer that many programs and opportunities to engage. So thank mm -hmm. you and please keep up the great work that you're doing. Thank you, Genevieve. To find out more about everything Virginia Park has to offer, call 310-458-8688 or visit uh, smgov.net slash VAPark. When we come back, we'll hear more about the park's partnership with Emeritus College and with the great programs available to senior citizens. Yes, I'm home. Save you some dinner.
Plan now for a major earthquake. Contact the Santa Monica Office of Emergency Management. Don't be caught in the dark. Welcome back to Nonprofit Profiles. Here to talk about what Emeritus College has to offer seniors is its Acting Associate Dean, Gita Runkel. Welcome, Gita. Thank you. So tell me about Emeritus College. What does Emeritus mean? Emeritus stands for Retired with Honor. And at Emeritus, our mission, really, our, our uh, raison d'etre, is to provide a community for older adults that mm -hmm. honors them through lifelong learning. And essentially what we do is we offer non-credit education to older adults and it's state funded. So even though it's state funded, we still welcome donations and volunteers from the community. Overall, we've been around quite a long time, since September, or excuse me, since spring of 1975. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, just a fantastic program that's been around quite a little while. We've had over 2,900 students at this point and it continues to grow. So seniors get to go back to college because you're at Santa Monica College, is that right? Absolutely, yes. So really the mission of the college is to help from cradle to grave essentially. And so we help students and have partnerships at the college with students in high school, obviously college age students, and then going all the way through to people who are returning to college for degrees. And then of course in our program, we're returning to college really just to continue with lifelong learning. And it sounds like there's some pretty fun programs. I know you have arts and music, and can you tell me about what, what kind of programs seniors can take advantage of? Absolutely. So we have a variety of classes, and as you mentioned, we've got arts and music, literature, writing, computer, post-stroke recovery. Computer's got to be popular, huh? Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. It's I know. one of those scary things for some seniors and for mm -hmm. others. It's really exciting. Yeah, I know that there are some, some seniors in my own life who've really taken to that and they're on Facebook more often than I am. Fantastic, <laughs> fantastic. It's never you know too old or we're never too old to learn a new trick, as they say, or it's never too late, really, to learn a new trick like that. And tell me about the programs that are offered specifically at Virginia Avenue Park. Absolutely. So our partnership with Virginia Avenue Park has been around for many years. We're really thankful for this relationship. And it it's such a great facility. It is. It's so beautiful. I saw it last week and I was amazed at how gorgeous it is. And it allows us the opportunity to extend our services to a different territory than we would normally be able to really manage on our own budget, which is really fantastic. And so we offer here a variety of courses, so for example, literature in Spanish and physical fitness classes, yoga classes, and also Spanish folk singing. And essentially, it's just a really convenient location for the local community here. If they don't feel like driving all the way to our main campus on 2nd Street, then they can stay here in the local community. The facilities are gorgeous, as you mentioned. The parking is really easy. <laughs> That's <And> important. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And so we're very thankful for the relationship here. We're thankful to the city of Santa Monica, especially for supporting us and collaborating with us. And I understand that there's an art gallery and, and an annual showing of, of artists' work. Yes, yes. Over at the Second Street location, our main headquarters, we have a beautiful art gallery and we feature work from our students, we feature work from our faculty, and we also have local artists in the community featured there too. And it's a really wonderful space and students get very competitive about getting their work <laughs> in the show and they have so much pride when they see their work there and they bring their family to show their work. And is some of that included in your publications? I, I see you've brought a, a couple of uh, things to show us. Yes, yes, actually we do. We have a couple of publications. The first is called Pen and Brush, and this is a collaboration of the art class as well as the autobiography class. So it's got some personal oh, life so works in it and then some of the artwork that students create. So it's a collaboration of two classes. And then a second book that we have is called Emeritus Chronicles, and this is from another writing course. And essentially this is just all literature in this book. And so it's really great. Every year we publish essentially the works of our students, and it's really fabulous stories. So it's got to be really wonderful for you to be able to provide seniors a chance to express themselves in ways that maybe they didn't have a chance to do in their careers or in their family life. It's kind of like opening a door to a whole new world. 
Absolutely, it really is. I actually had the honor of judging the photo show recently, and wow. one of the students was expressing to me how he didn't really know anything about photography, and he picked it up in his retirement. He picked it up at Emeritus College, and how much he's learned about it, and now he's so comfortable with the camera, and he would actually had never really used a computer much before, and through this course, he got to learn how to use a computer so that he could Photoshop his classes, or Photoshop his artwork, and so he was just saying, you know, what joy it brought to him to be able to do that. Well, it's so nice because in an older age and in retirement, people m maybe have more time than they had before, and it's really wonderful that you're providing something to do with that time that is not just, you know, fun, but also learning new skills and and uh, enabling them to do things that maybe they never imagined they could do. Absolutely, absolutely. It's it's really wonderful. A lot of people you know, at the end of the day, they're able to be physically active through our exercise classes mm -hmm. and movement classes, post-stroke recovery classes. They're able to be mentally active through our arts, our literature courses, our current events, political science classes. And then, more importantly, I think this provides an amazing social opportunity for them. Some of our students have lost their spouses. Some of mm -hmm. them are far from family or maybe don't have any family left anymore. So and it's a helps to create community. Absolutely, it really is. And for many people, this is like a second home for them. It's mm -hmm. something they have to live for. So it's really just a wonderful friendship that they develop with other students, with faculty, and it definitely really is like community and a family. Mm -hmm. Wow, and are there opportunities uh, just briefly for intergenerational um, engagement? Yes, indeed, yes. There's a few opportunities. So the one of the big ones that we have right now is the collaboration in our band. We have a wonderful concert band and it has our students from our program and also students from Santa Monica High School and they collaborate together for concerts. That's so great. Yes. So yes. It's, it's passing on the wisdom uh, to a new generation. Absolutely. And we're looking at potentially down the line passing on the wisdom of the younger generation to the older generation through some technology transfer you know, information like social media and things like that. So we're looking at additional ways to get the intergenerational discussions it going. It goes both ways. Yes, it does. Well, thank you so much for being with us and sharing about the programs of Emeritus College. It sounds like you're providing a wonderful service, not just for the seniors in our community, but for our entire community. Thank you, Genevieve. We it appreciate the opportunity to highlight the program and our relationship with Virginia Avenue Park. All right, well, thank you so much. And thank you for being with us. For more information about Emeritus College, call 310-434-4306. Please stay with us to find out about how Virginia Avenue Park is working with the Pico Branch Library to offer programs for learners of all ages. Even if a signal indicates it's safe to walk, it's never safe unless drivers see you. Last year, 113 pedestrians were injured in Santa Monica. You don't have to go to extremes to get a driver's attention. It just takes a little eye contact. Take the right steps to be safe. Watch the road. Welcome back. Here to enlighten us on Virginia Avenue Park's partnership with the Santa Monica Public Library is Cecilia Tovar, the Pico Branch Manager. Cecilia, welcome. Thank you. So tell me about the programs that are offered at the Pico Branch Library. Well, we have many programs. Uh, we just started with our story times. We also have baby time, book clubs, author talks. In the future, we're going to include computer classes for the adults, um, but we also have movie screening, and of course, we really working together with the Virginia Avenue Park. Yeah, you're right there on that campus. Yes, yes, I think it's a wonderful addition. Um, we get to see everyone that come into the park, and they're using the uh, Virginia Avenue Park amenities and the uh, meeting rooms, but they also come into the library. I think that everybody is so happy to be there. Oh yeah, and I understand you have a lot of programs for youth. Yes, that's our main focus. Uh, we do have early literacy programs. Um, also, we have the um, computer, the uh, early literacy um, computers for um, little kids. And, and those are separate. You actually have a separate 
set yes. of computers for uh, adults and for children. Correct. We do have a computers for children, but these early literacy um, stations are not connected to the internet, and they are specifically for toddlers and preschoolers, and they are very interactive, and also they are in Spanish and English, and so they are games that parents can be there in the educational games, and also, you know, they will be able to, to learn all the reading, reading is that they need to. <laughs> sure, I know it's it's probably more fun for a kid to go, oh, I get to play on the computer. Right, <laughs> right. And I'm still at the library. Exactly, because around them is all the picture books and board books, so they have, you know, the access to the material right there. And I, I know for me, you know, reading has always been really important and, and something I try to pass on to my kids, and I think just being in that environment being surrounded by books and understanding how much books have to offer exactly. makes I a big difference. Oh yes, I think if you um, encourage kids to read, but in a fun way, mm -hmm. not if they feel that it's a homework or a punishment, mm -hmm. I think they're really going to develop a habit of reading. Also, in our summer, we always encourage all the people once the kids are out of school to participate in our summer reading program. And this is something that all the libraries nationally do. Mm -hmm. And so they come, they get sign up, and every time they read about three or four books, they get a token or, you know, a free gift Oh, I remember or that. Something. Yeah, my kids participated in that. <laughs> yes, and we'll do it. And so we invite um, authors to come, storytellers, and we have fun programs for the whole family, not just for the little kids. Everyone to enjoy and be in that like you said, in that environment. And speaking of environment, I understand it's a beautiful facility. Can you tell me a little bit about what it looks like? Sure. When you come into the library, you will see the popular material there, our gondolas with our new books. To your left, you'll see the children area with the computers. And to your far right, you'll have the self-checkout and the adults and also the adult computers. We do have three um, study rooms, uh, so if someone wants to have a quiet time, they can come. But we really reserve those um, study rooms from three to six for students to come and do their homework. So the, the kids are the ones that check in out the, the study rooms. And do they have help with their homework? Is that available at the library? Yes. Well, if they need to um, ask, uh, you know, I need to find this book and I'm doing this research, the librarians are there all, all the time so that we can help them out. <coughs> then also, you know, the tutors, if they come in, um, they can sit uh, in the study rooms and help them out. So it provides a safe place for tutors to meet with children. Correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I understand that everyone at this particular branch of the library is uh, fluent in both English and Spanish. Yes, the permanent staff are bilingual. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, you know, we have from the Pico neighborhood many uh, parents that don't speak English or they're or learning English. Mm -hmm. So we um, try to help them out as much as they they we can in their own language. And what kind of outreach into the neighborhood does the Pico Branch Library do? Well, we go to the schools. Um, we also uh, work with uh, some of the uh, agencies, uh, for, uh, for example, the um, <coughs> Low income housing, we also go to them and because we advertise our programs with them and let them know what we have. And they have invited us to come and present. Um, and of course, you know, we depend a lot in, uh, from the Virginia Avenue Park uh, connections that they have already. <laughs> so you can go out into the community and let people know, both at nonprofit agencies and schools, that yes. come to Pico Branch Library, come to Virginia Avenue Park. Exactly. There's yes. a lot to offer. Yes, and want. Um, uh, area that we have um, is the farmers market, and I think that farmers market brings so many people into oh the yeah. library, and also there's so many people out there that they are constantly asking, "Oh, you know, I didn't know that the library was here. I'm so glad," and and that's when we also letting them know. So just to wrap <coughs> up, why should we be excited about this new branch library? What's what's special and different and super exciting? Well, I believe it's because it's a beautiful branch and also because it is part of the Virginia Avenue Park campus. Mm -hmm. I believe that we offer many resources. We also are brand new collection and we have technology. Mm -hmm. We also provide many resources and um, research and it, um, help to you know, the community. I believe there's a way, um, there's a space uh, for the community to also meet and connect and relax. Well, <laughs> it sounds like a wonderful place and what a great thing to have a branch library with so much to offer connected to a park and a recreation facility that also has so much to offer. So it sounds like between the branch library and the Virginia Avenue Park and all the great nonprofits you work with, 
there's just so much <coughs> happening. So I hope our viewers will come and see you. Yes, thank you so much. Oh, thank you for <laughs> being with us. And thank you for being with us for another edition of Nonprofit Profiles. To find out more about the Pico Branch Library, call 310-458-8684. And now that you know all the great things that are happening at Virginia Avenue Park, I hope you'll stop by to find out what the park has to offer you. Thank you. Thank you.